So the five tips I'm going to cover um, are related to row level calculations, broadly calculated fields, filters, cardinality, we'll define what that is and how it can impact your, your workbook, and then dashboards generally. Now I will say as we go through this, um, Tableau has done a tremendous amount of work inside of the mechanics and architecture of Tableau to, let's say, polish over some basic mistakes. So if you're doing this report for a small team or for yourself for that self-service analytics, um, you'll probably be able to get away without being perfect on your, your best practices when it comes to your visual elements. But if you are building a report that's going to service your organization with high concurrency, with data loads and things like that, the more you can do correctly, the more chance you have for a performant dashboard once you get downstream into Tableau Server or Tableau Online. Cool. So let's get into this. So aggregation versus aggregated calculations versus row level calcs. Um, I think the best way to do, let's define it and then I'll break you over into Excel here and I'll show you explain it. So aggregated calculations perform a function on a column of data. You aggregate before you do your calculation, sum, median, average, whatever. Row level calculations perform a function row by row by row and then aggregate once they do the row level calculations. Let me show you what I mean. There's actually a little comment here. Let me make sure I'm not missing any questions. Okay, sorry, not related. I will pop over to Excel here. So let's say I'm just trying to do an estimation of my profit. And so I write a little calculation that maybe looks like this. The sum, actually I do profit times 50%. And so you can see there, I'm saying to Tableau, for every row of profit, let's multiply it by 50% and figure out what we're doing. So this is what Tableau would do. It would literally go row by row and perform this calculation, like so. Now, when I bring this calculated field into Tableau, assuming that you've got aggregations turned on in your worksheet, Tableau would then aggregate it. So Tableau by default would likely sum it. So you are getting the correct answer, but you are doing a lot of work to get to that answer. To do these five records, I did six calculations, one for each record, and then one for the entire column of then calculated adjusted profit. If I had 10 million records in my data source, I'd be doing 10 million and one um, calculations. And so I'm just asking Tableau to do a lot of extra work unnecessarily. Whereas, alternately, if I sum before I do my calculation, I can get to the exact same result. But now I'm doing two calculations. I'm summing profit for the column, and then I'm adjusting it by my 50%. And so in terms of how you would write this in Tableau, you would put the aggregation inside of the calculation. Oops, let me put a little note there. And so this is the difference between row level and profit or an, an aggregated calculation. And honestly, this is probably the number one mistake I see people do inside of their workbook. They know that they can get to a result either way. They just don't know why one way is probably better than the other. Does that mean you would never use row level calculations? No. If you wanted to have a bar split by profitable transactions versus unprofitable transactions, then you would probably need to do a row level calc but use them with purpose versus my accident. And so if I hop back over to my little deck here, there we go. Um, you can see that the number of calculations can balloon quite drastically, particularly if you're doing multiple calculations across several worksheets that are inside of your dashboard. The other thing I would say is level of detail calculations by definition are also going to be slower for this sort of same concept. Notice when you take a fixed or exclude or include and you drag it into your view, it's not aggregated. Tableau is adding an aggregation to it once you bring it in, whether that's sum or attribute or whatever. Because inside of the LOD, you are doing a different level of um, aggregation. You're doing a different level of analysis, whether it's by category or customer name or whatever. So Tableau has to do that on a much more granular detail than as an aggregated view. 
Now again, level of detail calps are awesome. I love them. You will be using them. But again, use them with purpose, understanding that you're spending part of your monthly budget. Let me just pause and see if there's any questions. Okay, just internal chat. All right, so when we get to calculated fields generally, um, ideally, you want to follow some of these basic tips. And there's a couple more that I decided to take out just because I only had 30 minutes. One is if you are going to build a semantic layer, Tableau can do it for you, but Tableau is then giving up some of that performance. Whereas if you can build that semantic layer a step before Tableau Desktop, then Tableau can focus on the things that it can do from a visual standpoint, rendering and doing all the great stuff in terms of your filters and interactivity. In other words, you can build that, that business logic into Tableau Prep or Alteryx or to your data source or your materialized view and let that do the lifting there and segregate. Again, it's what works best for what you're trying to do. If you're do, doing something for yourself or for a small team, build it in Tableau Desktop and don't worry about it. If you're building for an organizational high visibility report, it's always best to try to take as much business logic out of Tableau and let, it, let the data source do the work. The other thing I'll say is um, data types uh, are not equal when it comes to their speed. Some data types are slower than others when you use them inside of calculated fields. And when we get to the end, and I'll demo this in Tableau, I'll illustrate this. Um, the fastest uh, data types are the most simple. So basically, Boolean, true, false, yes, no, one, or zero. And as you sort of work your way across integers and float and dates and things like that, the slowest, obviously, are strings. And so if you are doing survey analysis or text analysis, strings are going to be the most costly, um, inherently, of course. Um, I've got this let Tableau do the work. And what I mean by that is, is if you've got the ability to do something using native functionality in Tableau, like for instance, using their split functionality or using their group, let Tableau do it. Don't write a calculation to do it. Tableau is generally going to be faster when you use its sort of embedded, easy, one-click functionality. Finally, um, on this one, nested clauses and if statements. Tableau will go through those clauses until it finds a true result and then stop and then go do that true result, which means if you've got a disproportionate amount of uh, results that are going to take you to a particular clause, put that clause earlier in the if then so you can get Tableau stopping that process immediately. For instance, um, if a lot of your customers' names start between A and F and you're doing different tests on their last name or whatever, do the A and F first. I had a student in one of my classes, a Chinese student, who said, well, a lot of our names start with Z, X, and Q, and, and all of the stuff, and Y at the back of it. So should I put those names first in my if-then statement? I'm like, yes, exactly, perfect. So try to get that, that nested so that most of the stuff gets caught earlier on so the tablet doesn't have to do the extra processing and tests as you work your way down that if-then statement. Filters. So I got three things here. One is if you can stage your data so that it doesn't all load at once on your screen, you're going to have a faster dashboard, which is why cascading filters are so good. Start with a high level view, a map for instance, and then when people click on it, show them the detail for what they've just clicked on. And then they can obviously click again and sort of work their way down, drilling down into your data versus just replicating all the data on your screen. You can see how that might make Tableau work harder, not only from a query standpoint, but from a rendering standpoint as well. Um, this is, the next one is true for usability as well as uh, efficiency. When you've got filters that have a lot of values and they're sort of dependent on each other, and I make a selection on this top filter, change this one so that they're only seeing the relevant values. So if I'm, if I'm looking at countries and I choose a country down here are states, filter the states so that I'm only looking at the states relevant to that other example. And of course, you can do that just from the little drop down in the corner of the filter. And two options are everything in database or relevant values. This last one on this slide, context filters, is actually really interesting because when I started using Tableau, context filters were sort of a, those things are expensive, be careful how you use them. But I think somewhere around 9.0, um, the way that context filters work in the back end of Tableau changed. And so now, I just read this, I think, earlier this week, context filters can actually be a little bit of a performance saver. 
Um, and for those that don't know what context filters are, go Google the, um, the order of operations. And you'll see context filters are the highest level worksheet filter. So they're setting the context for all the other filters and things that come after it. These are like sets, level of detail calcs, dimension filters, measure filters, table calculations, all that stuff. So those are really useful. Cardinality. The number of elements in a set or group, meaning uh, do I have five options or do I have 500 options? And so a high cardinality object requires more effort. And the biggest point where people get into trouble here is by putting something with a lot of options into their filters. Um, and you can see there's some other sort of permutations of this parameters with a lot of options, data blending on a very granular field, uh, and then count distinct is obviously, because it's going value by value by value, is going to be um, uh, slower than just count. So for instance, I, the, the way I see this most often is folks bringing in like customer name and letting people go and look at any customer, even though there's 10,000 of them, Tableau has to have those ready to go right when you start. Whereas if you I uh, use relevant filters, uh, then you can sort of stage how many customers get shown at any one time. So again, don't make Tableau do extra work when you don't need it. The last topic here is our dashboard. So there's, again, this is where Tableau has gotten really powerful and so you can get away with a lot more. Uh, rendering marks, so if you've got a scatter plot with a billion data points, Tableau's going to have to work harder to get that done. The number of worksheets on your dashboard uh, in the old days, people would say four to six dashboards. Now people routinely throw 15 or 20 on there, but use it with purpose. Um, oftentimes when I tell you, you have five dashboards to work with versus 50, the dashboard that has five on it is going to be more effective because you're cutting out and being more efficient in terms of what data and the story you're trying to tell. And then workbook size. I have seen some absolutely atrocious workbooks as a consultant. One of them had 200 worksheets and I think 1200 fields and just getting the workbook to open was a pain. Uh, so one workbook is not needed to rule all dashboards. You can segment them off by topic, by question, by dashboard. Uh, just, I think some common sense is there, but don't feel like you have to have just one dashboard. These are documents, these are files, let them proliferate. Just be mindful of taking stuff off server that you don't need. Your server admin will appreciate that. Okay, so let's get into Tableau. So I have got a workbook that I prepared over here. Um, let me make this full size. It's right under my video. Okay, so I'm gonna load it. And when I load it, I'm gonna bring it into a blank page um, because I want you to see the loading of these other things that I've prepared. And before I do that, I'll just show you, I'm gonna, uh, as we go through these, I'm gonna point out some of their performance. And so for those folks that don't know, you can actually do some performance testing straight from Tableau Desktop. It's here under help, settings and performance, performance recording. And so that would start a session that Tableau would then monitor how quickly or slowly things that you do within Tableau take to load and query and process. I'm not going to start it because it's a little session. You would start it, do your stuff, and then come back and end it. And then Tableau will produce a dashboard uh, for you that to see the results all the way down to the query level. So it's really powerful. Unfortunately, we never cover that in any of the Tableau training. So some people don't know it's there. But I do have some workbooks that I have done, and I'll show you the performance recording for those. So the first example I've got over here is dashboard one. And on this one, I have taken uh, the 2019 Australia Sir, uh, election results and, and did some row level calculations based off of tweets and favorites and things like that, as well as sort of a, uh, a combined score of sort of traction with that particular tweet. So I'm going to load it. I did all of these as row level. So let me go to that dashboard. You can see there Tableau is having a real nice think about that. Now, the dashboard right next to it, dashboard number two, I did the exact same calculations, got to the exact same numbers, but this time I did aggregated calculations inside. So we'll come and take a look at that one. So anecdotally, we might see a little bit of difference. Hard to tell, but I actually put this into the Tableau um, 
performance recorder so you can actually see the time it took to load these two dashboards, which is right here. So the red was the first one, the row level calculations, and the turquoise here was the aggregated calcs. Now, I'm not doing anything super complex here, but you can already see the, the variance between the load times when I actually had Tableau monitor this. Uh, the computing, the layout, and the executing query being, in particular, a pretty big difference, probably around 30% more efficient. So that can kind of give you an idea, quantifiably, of the performance difference here. Let's go to another one. So I've got a map and a bar chart that I've created, and there's quite a few little points of information on this map. I have, t I have mapped every single tweet related that had been grabbed for the Australia 2019 election. That was our federal election where we decided our, our prime minister. And that's all of the tweets, uh, as well as a bar chart just by tweets by country. Now I've got a parameter up here that's using some logic. The first one I did was just a little test. Did this tweet have more than 100 likes? So I'm using the integer data type. So I'll click on that. You can see I'm going to resize these uh, and map them based off of whether they were a popular tweet or not. No surprise, of course, that Australia has a whole bunch of popular tweets about our election. The other one I did was it contained the word liberal. Liberal was the party that won the election. And so I'm doing a string analysis here. So I'll click over onto that one. And um, you'll see when we actually get over to the performance query that it's going to take a lot longer. So let's go take a look at that, which is right here. So I've got my bar chart and my map, and I, I reduced it down so we just saw the queries that were being executed. Um, the entire performance summary is over here. You can uh, have a look at all the cool stuff. You can, I've, I've reformed that, reformatted the events to make it a little bit easier to tell the story I want to tell. So we can see on the map, we've got a query that took a lot longer than others. So let's hover over that. And I'll just use zoom it to kind of point out, look at this. This is where we did the string analysis, looking for the word liberal inside of the tweet itself. And that took 0.35 seconds. Again, we weren't doing anything super crazy. When I come down here to 0.8, this is where I'm saying, show me anything that was more than 100. You see the difference in performance there? Data types matter. Uh, we're four times slower when we did that string analysis. So hopefully that gives you some idea and, it, and also illustrates to you, if you've never seen the performance recorder, the cool stuff that you can put in here. That's actually the query that Tableau generates in the background to query the data source and to get our results. Let's go back to our presentation now, which is right here. So I hope that gives you some ideas on how you might uh, perf perfect your performance or make it more efficient. I've got some other things here I'll show you. One, we wrote an article called the Tableau Performance Checklist, which is over on our website, right here. Again, this was written probably about three or four years ago, so some of these are less important than others. But each one of these links here is an article that can take you into really useful, fun stuff to learn a little bit more. Um, for instance, this limit the number of worksheets on a dashboard, <laughs> that's where it says four. You can easily break that rule and still have a, a performing dashboard that works fine. But some of these are still very much true, like the cardinality and sort of filters, which is up here in one of these articles. Another one that I wanted to show you, um, one of my colleagues uh, at Interworks, Robert Rouse, who's a Tableau Zen master, wrote this performance workflow. And he does it from a workbook perspective. And there's actually a couple other workflows. And I find this stuff really, really fascinating because you can kind of start here and then ask yourself questions about where your workbook is slow, what you've done on it, and then kind of work through how to check through it. This is as useful a tool as I've ever seen. Um, he's got some other ones there. So it's free. All you have to do is just fill out this little contact information and you can get the PDF. Um, but really, really great stuff. And this is actually pretty recent. I think that's, of a, yeah, as of last year. So a lot of good stuff there too. And I would be remiss if I didn't point out this white paper um, written by our very own Alan Aldridge, the uh, formerly with Tableau. I think he was the first Asia Pacific employee for Tableau. Now he's over at Snowflake. But this is this is again a little bit older, but there's just a tremendous amount of value in here. And this is on tableau.com. 
enter in some basic information and you can download the white paper and it's it's very very in depth so uh, I would certainly recommend that so that is look at that I'm one minute uh, right on time that is my presentation happy to answer any questions that you might have let me see if I can see your smiling faces there you go so any questions I don't see anything any comments was that useful Sweet. Sweet. Thanks, Rob. Rob. Um, I think that was super useful. Uh, I, I, I think the whole budget idea works really well. I, I tried to explain it in the, part, in the past and tried to use a, a bucket, like you have only that much that you can put in the bucket. Yeah. But I think your analogy works a lot better. I have a lot of struggle to, to explain that to people that they understood it. Um, do you think there's a sort of a, a trade-off between performance and and giving people everything they need because obviously if you for example if you if you aggregate first then you sort of you limit a couple of things that you that you could do further down the track i think the most important thing when you're building a dashboard is is really um really deciding the story that you're wanting to tell and i think uh, a lot of us what we do is we start building worksheets and we're trying to explore our data and like ooh, that's interesting let's put it into a dashboard when instead we should be designing from the dashboard back. And I think when you do that, then you can really work that budget for performance and say, okay, I really need to do some row level counts. I really need to do some level of detail. Maybe I extract my data and I don't have a live connection to make up for it if it's slow. Um, so I think when you define your story, you then define what the user needs. And then from there you can optimize your build versus building and then trying to figure out what goes in. Cool, thank you. Um, I think there were not any other questions at the moment, and I, I know you said that you need to shoot off anyway. Um, so thank you for, for that presentation and to tell us how to optimize our workbooks. And if anybody comes up with questions afterwards, uh, you're quite active on Twitter, so you're easily reachable, and I'm sure you'll be happy to answer any open questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you for inviting me to speak. I look forward to catching the videos for all the other presenters. I'm very sorry I have to run, but um, bye. See you guys.